friends, my name is Felicia Masonheimer and I am so excited to show you how I use my Valmarie paper journal to cultivate a stronger prayer life and track the answers that God has showed in my life. I'm going to show you how I break it down each month because I do my prep for my month with my planner and with my power sheets, which are my goal planning sheets and my prayer journal all in conjunction so that I can make sure that I'm praying over my goals and I'm praying over my calendar in addition to the people in my life. Now, some of you might not know who I am, so a little introduction. I am a blogger, author, and speaker. I have two little girls who are here with me today, and I'm a business owner. And between those things, I have a lot going on, but that's why I need to be in So as I sit down with my journal to prepare for the next month, the first thing I like to do is look over the answered prayers from the last month and make sure that I've updated this section because this is going to put my heart in the right attitude of gratitude and meditating on. In order to accurately write out my answered prayers though, I need to go back over what I have been praying over throughout the month so that my memory can be jogged and I can see what I was praying for. And then I can accurately fill out the answered prayer section. As I start filling out my April prayer journal, one thing that I'm trying to remember to do each month is to actually pray over my prayer requests. What does God want me to focus on this month? Where should my prayer efforts be directed? I need to hear from him. The first page, you'll see the challenge. Write a goal that'll help you make prayer a habit. Now, my husband and I are super into habits, and one of the things that's a great strategy is habit stacking. So to create a habit out of prayer, you're going to want to associate it with something else that you do. So every day I go to bed, right? And I like to go to bed. I like nighttime. <laughs> so I can't go to bed until I've spent some time in intentional prayer. And this means it can be any time during the day, but it has to happen before bed. Next section is our world and nation. This one is something I often struggle with. Um, I honestly don't spend a ton of time reading up on what's going on in the world right now. So this is something that I do want to improve on. But what I usually end up doing is thinking about the different nations in the world where we have fellow believers in Christ who are being persecuted and choosing one of those nations. I also usually pray for the nation of Peru because we have two compassion children that we sponsor there. section is community and we are very involved in our church and in our community but there's only four lines so I have to be very picky about what I focus my prayer on each month in this area so I usually start by praying for our church body and praying for the street we live on the next two sections are loves and family and it might seem like these are the same but the way I see it is your loves are those in your innermost circle. So your spouse, your kids, or your future spouse, your siblings, or your closest friends. Family would be any extended family beyond that innermost circle. That's how I use it anyway. So this is for my husband and my kids. This is for my extended family, um, my parents, my siblings, and Josh's parents. Then on the next page, we have our friends section. And you'll see in a minute that this is not where I put all of my friends. I kind of divide them up later on. But this is where I put my closest friends prayer requests and anything that comes up in our relationship. In this area, I put the names of people who I am praying for salvation. And this changes month to month. I usually just ask the Lord, like, who does he lay on my heart to pray over for salvation and that they would come to know him? The heavy is such a great reminder for me because it encourages me to pray for those who have hurt me or wounded me or people who I'm really having a hard time loving. And so I always make sure to fill this out and check my heart about who would be best for them. Okay, so the next page is personal, and this is really easy to fill up, right? Because we know ourselves better than anybody else. Um, and it's also easy to take goals and put them in the personal section. So it's nice to have these two separate sections so that you can discern between the two. I'm actually gonna show you the kinds of things that I've prayed over in the past. I don't always like to show what I'm praying because it's kind of private, but I think this will be helpful for you to see the kinds of things that I pray over myself and over my business and over my home because it'll give you some ideas.
the goals section, I will put in what goals I have for this month after I've done my power sheets. I will link them here. That's what I use for planning my goals every month. And I put the goals on my fridge and in my planner, and then I put them here so I can pray over them. Okay, so in these sections, these are all blank. And typically what I do is I put in specific sections that then some of my friends fall into. So for instance, this month I am focusing on friends of mine who are pregnant or struggling with infertility and miscarriage. And so I usually have this section no matter what, because that's my season and a lot of my friends are in that season. And so I will write in the names of those who fit this. And so they wouldn't be in the friends section, they would be in this section. The second section is for our college students. So my husband and I lead the college ministry at our church. And so I put all the requests and the prayers that I have for our college students in this section. Then in this final section, I put one of two things, either my blog community or I put my Young Living Builder. So I am a Young Living Silver, if you're familiar with the essential oil company. And so I pray over my business builders every month with this section. You can do whatever you want with the blank sections. There's so much that you can do. But I like to do basically groups of people because that way I can narrow down specific things that I'm praying over them based on the demands that I know are on their life. This is the last page here before answered prayers. And here I like to put something to meditate on about the Lord this month. And I always come back to God's kindness because this is something that I struggled with a lot for many years, seeing him as a judge instead of seeing him as kind. In this section, what I usually do is I use my Give Me Jesus journal from Well Watered Women, which is what I use for my devotions, and I take the verse that stood out to me in my time in the Word that day, and I write it in here. And so I will add to this over the month. And then we're back where we began. So I will log answered prayers throughout the month, but like I said earlier, I like to go back and fill it out after the month is over. So you guys, I hope this was helpful to you. I hope this gave you some ideas for your own prayer journey. One thing I would add is if you are in a Bible study that passes around a sheet like this, if my Bible study does, um, what I will do is I will sometimes copy these into my journal or I'll just fold it up and keep it in my journal so I can pray over those requests in addition. A privilege being here today, guys. I hope this was helpful. If you want to learn how to get deeper into the word, hey there you. If you want to learn how to get deeper into the word, you want to learn how to discern what is truth in today's culture, head on over to my profile.